Hey, what's up everybody? Um, today's video is going to be brought to you by the question that um, Escher Funes, I don't know if I'm saying the right, Funes Funes asked. Um, awesome video, I was wondering if you could do a video of ROTC application processes, scholarships, PT standards, do's and don'ts, thank you so much. So, okay, because I know a lot of you have asked about ROTC scholarships, what that all entails. Um, and how do you get one and whatnot? Well, I applied. Um, I, I did not apply for an ROTC scholarship because you don't have to have a scholarship to get into the program. It's not required at all, but I mean, who, who wouldn't want to have their complete college paid for? So uh, I'm just going to jump right into it. The way it breaks down is um, there are three type of, of ROTC scholarships, and this is the Air Force, specifically the Air Force. There are three types. There's type 1, type 2, and type 7. I don't know why they decided to jump to 7 instead of 3, but it doesn't make any sense to me. So type 1 scholarship, and you can find all this information that I'm telling you on AFROTC.com. It has all this information, so if you want to cross-reference it or look for it yourself, um, feel free. So type 1, it says it pays full college tuition most fees and book allowance. Approximately 5% of our four-year scholarships are type 1, mostly in technical fields as deemed necessary by the Air Force. So that's talking about that 5% of everyone that applied for um, the scholarship, everyone that applied for an ROTC scholarship got type 1. The biggest factor is going to be that technical degree as deemed necessary by the Air Force because it's always going to be about what the Air Force needs. That means your best bet is uh, if you really truly want that scholarship, you want your college paid for, you know the Air Force is what you want, your best degrees are going to be your civil engineering degrees, electrical engineering, computer engineering, any type of um, technical degree, so nothing like bachelors of the arts, no basket weaving degrees, nothing in business or history, something like that. It needs to be a technical degree that um, the Air Force is in need of. So that's going to be the biggest factor, that's what's going to boost you um, up to the top of the list when they're looking at these applications because if they if you have a degree that they need that's going to make you stand out um, also for your, your for your scholarship in general you're gonna have to meet obviously academic standards for your ACT it's going to be a need, need to be a composite score of 24 and that's the minimum and a com uh, combined score not including the writing for your SAT and it needs to be an 1800 um, and that's again that's the minimum and the minimum GPA is a 3.5 and these are all minimums and the one thing you need to understand about the Air Force is minimums are just the minimums if you meet just the minimums you're never gonna get it ever anything in the Air Force because the Air Force how they like to break it down is you always need to strive better than the minimums because that's what's gonna make you more um, appealing as a cadet and as a candidate basically for this scholarship so those are the standards uh, for type 1 and just for scholarship in general. Now there's type 2 which pays college tuition and most fees up to $18,000 and book allowance. Approximately 15% of our four-year scholarship winners will be awarded type 2. Um, again, it's mo now it just says mostly in technical um, fields and it doesn't say um, as deemed necessary by the Air Force. So type 2 is kind of just a step down from type 1. It's not as hardcore and it's not as um, um, as strict as what degrees they allow so you have some leeway to pick more of maybe a business degree or maybe um, some type of criminal justice degree if you're trying to be security forces because that goes hand in hand and that can make you more um, appealing as a, a candidate for a security forces officer if that's what you want to do if you want to be a police officer uh, so it says it pays um, college tuition up to eighteen thousand dollars so if it goes over that then that's going to be have to be out of your own pocket um, a year if it goes over that eighteen grand mark um, so yes, and then it says uh, if it goes over 18 grand, then he or she pays the difference. So it's just a little bit more lenient than type 1, not much there. And then we move on to type 7. So type 7 says pays college tuitions up to the equivalent of the public school's in state rate and book allowance. So what that means is your average uh, rate of what someone pays in, for the public universities in your um, respective states, that's what it's going to uh, match up to. So if your average is 14 grand a year uh, overall in your state, that's what they're going to match. If it's 20, that's what they're going to match. But usually it's relatively low since public universities aren't too expensive, at least I know where I lived. Um, 
and then it says if a student receives a type 7 offer but wishes to attend a college or university where they do not qualify under the guidelines the student can convert the four-year type 7 scholarship to a three-year type 2 scholarship so basically what that is all saying is that um, if you don't meet the requirements or there is a degree that is not offered um, with that type seven if you want to transfer to somewhere like more expensive then you can um, convert that type seven into a type two so it's going to pay more of that college tuition but that degree is what's really going to help you um, get moved up into that is if um, you you have that so it's kind of hard to explain but I mean if you read it it's uh, it's, it's right there in black and white Scholarship length. So there's three and four year scholarships are available. All four year scholarships um, activate in the fall of your freshman year. So that's when you arrive on campus to your college. Boom, you're already on scholarship. Uh, all three year scholarships activate in the fall of your sophomore year. Only three year type, the only three year type of scholarship offered is type two. All three year scholarship designees must complete AFROTC training during their freshman year in order to retain an eligibility. Basically what all that's saying is if is that you can go to college your freshman year and still get scholarship. And but it's only going to be that type two scholarship because type two is the only one that can be or type two or type seven is the only ones that are three year scholarships. So you can go all of your freshman year, apply like get your GPA up uh, make yourself more uh, appealing and then apply for an ROTC scholarship and you can still get it even though you're already a year into college. So deadlines, um, there are deadlines that you need to meet. Um, it just says in sport, it says important scholarship dates is June 1st, December 1st, January 12th, and May 31st. Um, so I'm assuming what that means, like because I have a pulled up right here, I'm just assuming that June 1st I would think would be um, for seniors that have just graduated that are going into college June 1st would be you know preparing sending you in which would be your type 1 scholarships and then December 1st I would assume that's your seniors that are still in high school that are about to graduate that coming uh, summer January 12th May 31st you just gotta look up the details cuz uh, honestly I'm a little blank on those dates so for your service commitment if you do sign up for a type 1 you can expect to serve uh, well if you're in any scholarship whatsoever you sign a contract that is going to be a, a minimum of four year commitment so depending on what officer slot you get because pilots owe a 10 year commitment because the training that you receive is a lot more extensive and the Air Force is not going to pay all that money just so you can get out in four years they want to get all of what they paid um, and invested in you out of you uh, so they give you a 10, a ten year contract um, for combat controllers, it's eight years, and that's really it for those um, career fields. Everything else is four years. And even if you're not on a scholarship and you make it all the way through the program, it's still going to be a minimum of four-year commitment. Um, so that's that. So that's really the scholarships. Um, in a nutshell, that took eight minutes. What's my time say? 8.37 uh, to explain all that. So I hope that helped in that sense, explain a little bit more of how the um, scholarships work and whatnot. So now let's move on to the second part of the question, which were the PT standards. So I can tell you that the ROTC does follow the exact PT standards of the Operational Air Force. Um, so for guys, if you want to max out, because an ROTC, you need to get a 95 or better on your PT score to be, um, to be a more appealing candidate for um, field training which is what you need to get selected for to kind of, um, it's between your sophomore and junior year. It's kind of like your boot camp for officers. It's 28 days at Maxwell Air Force Base in Alabama. So to make yourself more appealing, you need to get a 95 or 100. So to get that 95 or 100, you need to shoot for these um, scores. So if you're a male and you are less than 30 years of age, which that should be everyone because I don't know um, too many people that are over 30 and in college for ROTC, you need to get a maximum score. You can get a max of 67 push-ups in one minute, 58 sit-ups in one minute, and a 9-12, 1.5 mile run. That'll get you a perfect score. Um, the minimums that you can get for for male would be a 13-15, 13-36, 13-15 to 13-36 mile and a half run, 39 inches on your around your waist because there is a waist measurement, a waist circumference. 
uh, push-ups, 33 is your minimum, and 42 sit-ups is your minimum. And that's all in one minute, those push-ups and sit-ups. For my females, your maximum to get a 100 on the PT is um, anything less or equal to a 14-minute mile and a half time, which will get you 60 points. Uh, less than 29 inches on your around your waist, which gets you 20 points. Anything that is greater than 21 push-ups, and then anything that's greater than 31 sit-ups. If you do anything that's, so your max is 21 uh, push-ups and 31 sit-ups, that'll get you a perfect score, all those scores. And your minimums are 7 push-ups and sit-ups 11. But again, if you get just the minimum scores for everything, you're not going to do very well and you're not going to make yourself very appealing as a candidate. And that's um, going to reflect bad and you're not going to get um, as many offers. And, and so it, it can just be bad. So you want to always strive for the best. So those, those are the PT standards. Um, you take a PT test uh, in ROTC probably once. You take it once a semester. Um, you take Yeah, an actual PT test once a semester but you're PTing twice a week the whole time. So running, the running is the biggest factor. That's what gets you the most points. At 60 points, if you max it out and get a 9-12, or for females, if it's anything, 14 minutes or less, um, that's what gets you the most points. That's what I saw fail a lot of people is because they would max out their push-ups and sit-ups, but their cardio was complete crap, so they wouldn't get high enough scores they get in the 80s or the 70s because a 76, a 70 or a 76 is passing. That's just... Psh, passing but um, like I said if you strive for minimums you're never going to make it so um, as long as you work on your cardio and get that up that's your biggest thing and waist circumference that also carries uh, 20 points and uh, push-ups and sit-ups separate are 10 points so that's that's PT and that's the fitness standards I hope that helped um, and then moving on to do's and don'ts do is always volunteer for stuff. You want to make yourself known in your detachment. You want to be the one that's always there, always volunteering for stuff, um, getting your service hours in because you have to have at least, at least in my detachment, I have 15 hours per um, semester of, no, per month of service hours. That's just um, whether that's community service or helping out in some event that's going on on campus, something like that. So you need to make yourself well known because making yourself well known, that makes you. Um, uh, known to your commander and to your um, commanding officers that are over you that are looking at yourself because you're building a package while you're there. You're building um, a complete package that you're going to give to apply for that field training slot because if you don't get that field training slot, you're not going to be able to progress in ROTC and you're going to get kicked out. So that's what's going to make you more appealing is that, is, is, is volunteering for stuff. So I would say do that. Volunteer for all the things you can. Um, always excel, be a leader, um, always like raise your hand to answer first, even if you don't know the answer, always have that initiative and innovation, and don't be like, you know, don't be a follower, they're always looking for leaders, that's what the big thing about the Air Force is, is we're big on leaders, they don't, because they can get anyone that can follow orders, um, but they can only get a select uh, number of people that are actually good true leaders so that's what the whole first year is really about is weeding out the people who this program really isn't meant for um, so I hope that all helped any more questions I'll be happy to answer but that is ROTC scholarships PT and do's and don'ts um, in a nutshell so I hope that helped uh, I hope everyone has a good day